Welcome, and today we are going to discuss the basics of buzzers, what they're made of, how to use them, and where to use them. There are two main types of buzzers available, magnetic and piezoelectric. They both create sounds the same way, by moving a diaphragm back and forth to move the air and make sound, though the mechanism is very different. Magnetic buzzers use an electromagnet to move a diaphragm back and forth. Piezoelectric buzzers, on the other hand, use a vibrating piezoelectric crystal. Magnetic buzzers operate from lower voltages and higher currents, while piezo buzzers tend to be higher pitched and more energy efficient. Either type of buzzer can be either self-driving or externally driven. A self-driving buzzer generates a tone as soon as you apply power, making it extremely easy to use. Sometimes these self-driving buzzers are called indicators because they often have a specific purpose. There is a small circuit board inside the indicator that takes the incoming power and drives the buzzer exactly as needed to produce the desired tone. Because of this, indicators tend to be slightly larger. Externally driven buzzers require a signal from an external source like a microcontroller, 555 timer, or other logic circuit. The signal is usually a square wave, though other waveforms can also be used. These buzzers are also referred to as transducers. While they require a bit more effort to use, an externally driven buzzer gives you more flexibility because you can change the pitch and create different sound patterns like beeps, pulses, or chirps. If you need a single device to produce a variety of sounds, this is the better choice. Now, there are some common specifications to be aware of. Frequency response tells you how efficiently a buzzer produces sound at a given frequency. You can drive a buzzer at different frequencies, but the efficiency and sound pressure level will vary depending on the frequency response, which leads us to sound pressure level, or in layman's terms, loudness. This is usually proportional to the input voltage, and impedance is the measure of the effective resistance of the buzzer, basically the ratio of the applied voltage to current. Generally, the higher the impedance, the less power the buzzer uses. Finally, there are many different mounting styles, including panel mount, surface mount, through hole, and wire leads, to name a few. Now, with that theoretical background, we can start looking at some of these practical examples we have in our kit. This kit not only looks cool, but also has a wide variety of electromagnetic and piezoelectric indicators and transducers, all available from same sky. One of the first things you'll note is that these vary greatly in size. Some of them have wire leads, while others are through-hole mounted or surface mounted. Some even have side emissions, allowing sound to come out the side versus the top, which can be handy in certain thin applications. The kit has samples of both transducers and indicators, yet it can be hard to tell just by looking at them. We have these three on the back row that look the same other than their differing sizes. The two on the outside are transducers, however the middle one is an indicator, though they all look about the same. I should warn you that these can be quite loud, but we'll make them quieter when editing the video. More complicated indicators, like this medical indicator, has multiple pins, and all you need to do is supply power to the appropriate pin to have an IEC certified tone giving a low, medium, or high priority notification for medical ventilator applications, making integration into a medical device incredibly simple. Indicators can also have different pulses at the same frequency. This multi-tone indicator in the back left has two pins and when actuated, either provides a continuous tone or a pulsing tone. These are just a few examples, but it's already obvious that there are many different types of indicators, which is great because that gives you more choices for your designs. All the indicators and transducers I've pointed out so far are piezoelectric, which operate at higher voltages and lower currents than magnetic buzzers. These two surface-mounted buzzers are magnetic, so we can see exactly how they sound. Finally, some of these buzzers are completely waterproof with IP67 or IP68 ratings, while others aren't. If you anticipate your product or project being exposed to a harsh environment, you will likely want to review your options for IP ratings. And that's it. I hope that this was a useful overview of what buzzers are, the difference between transducers and indicators, the difference between piezo and magnetic buzzers, and a quick practical look at real buzzers in action. 
We have quite a few samples of both, so I highly recommend checking out Same Sky's Buzzers product offering. It would be a good opportunity to see the different styles and common values of all the various options. If you have any more questions about buzzers and how you can best use them, check out our audio blogs on samesguydevices.com.